Hey guys, we are looking at two-step equations today. Um, and I want to review the parts of an equation first because that's going to be important with our steps today. So main thing you need to remember for today is that the coefficient is the number in front of x and then the constant is the number by itself. Those words are important because those are gonna help us figure out the steps to solve an equation. So the first thing that we're gonna do is undo addition or subtraction with inverse operations to zero out the constant. So we're gonna get rid of the number by itself first. And then we will undo multiplication or division with inverse operations to eliminate the coefficient. So we get rid of the constant first and then we get rid of the coefficient second. We always follow those steps for a two-step equation unless we have an entire side of an equation that's being divided. Basically, if it's in fraction form, we're gonna undo that division first. But mainly, we will follow these two steps. Okay, let's look at number one. I have four x plus 13 equals nine. So my constant here is 13. I want to zero that out first. So I'm going to subtract 13 from both sides and I get 4x equals negative four. And now I'm going to divide both sides by four and I get x equals negative one. Okay, number two, it looks a little bit different, but I'm still going to follow the same process. I want to get rid of this constant first, the positive six, I want to make a zero with it. And the way I make a zero with a positive six is by subtracting six. And I'm gonna bring down this x over five and negative four minus six is negative 10. Okay, now x is being divided by five right here. So I need to undo that dividing by five by multiplying by five. And now x is isolated and negative 10 times five is negative 50, so x is negative 50. Okay, number three, I have decimals, that is fine. We'll just use the calculator, same process. I want to get rid of the constant first. The constant is negative 1.5, and I want to make a zero with that. I'm going to do the opposite of that minus 1.5 by adding 1.5 to both sides. And I get 0.6x equals 1.8 plus 1.5, which is 3.3. .3. And the last step is to divide by 0 0.6. So x is 3.3 divided by 0 0.6, and I get 5.5. Okay, number four, this is one of the special cases that I was talking about. This whole side is being divided by 14, so that is what I want to undo first. Whenever you have a whole entire side that is in fraction form, you want to get it out of fraction form. So that whole side is being divided by 14, I'm going to multiply by 14 to undo it. And then I get x minus 12 equals 16 times 14 is 224. And then my last step to get x by itself is to get rid of this minus 12. So I'm going to add 12 to both sides. And I get x equals 224 plus 12 is 236. Okay, number five. I have a constant that I need to get rid of first, so I'm gonna undo that minus four by adding four to both sides. And I'm left with sevenths, eighths, x equals 14. And then remember, when I have a fraction coefficient, I multiply by the reciprocal to undo that. Now x is by itself because that goes to one and my answer will be whatever 14 times eight sevenths is and I get 16. Okay, number six. 
I want to get x by itself, so I need to get rid of the constant that is attached to it first. I need to make a zero with the negative 24, so I'm going to add 24 to both sides. And I get negative x. Make sure you bring down that negative. It's really easy to forget that, so you have to make sure you bring down the negative sign. And then negative 15 plus 24 is 9 divide by negative 1, and I get x equals negative 9. Okay, number 7. It says write and solve an equation for the model shown below. So here is the left side of the equal sign. I have 1, 2, 3, 4 x's. And then I have negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 equals positive 2. Okay, now I'm just going to solve this equation for x minus 6 equals 2. I'm going to undo that minus 6 first by adding 6 to both sides. And I get 4x equals 8 divided by 4, so x is 2. Okay, let's look at number eight. We want to define the variable first. That will tell us what we're missing and then it'll be easier to write the equation. So let's read and try to think about what the missing part is. It says, Taylor joined a meal subscription service. She paid $20 to join and $10.50 per meal. If she spent a total of $104, how many meals has she purchased? So that is the missing part. That will be our variable. We will let x be the number of meals. Okay, so she paid 20 to join and then 10.50 per meal. Usually per means that's where the x goes and we talked about how x is the number of meals. So that makes sense. It's going to be $20 to join. And then on top of that $20 to join, so I'm going to add, it was $10.50 per meal. And then she spent $104 in total. Okay, now I'm going to solve this equation for x so I can figure out how many meals she purchased. So I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. Bring down this 10.50x and I'll get whatever 104 minus 20 is, which is 84. And then we're gonna divide by 10.50, and 84 divided by 10.50 is eight. So that means she purchased eight meals for that $104. Okay, number nine, it says the wind chill in Alaska is negative 11 degrees and is decreasing two degrees each hour. If the temperature is now negative 19 degrees Fahrenheit, how many hours have passed? So remember the variables, what we're looking for, which we can tell by the question, how many hours have passed? So X will be the number of hours. Okay, so it says the wind chill is negative 11. They're starting at negative 11. And then they're decreasing, which is subtracting, two degrees each hour. Each is another word that usually means x. And look, there's our variable. We're looking for the number of hours. So it's going to be minus 2x equals, now it is negative 19. Okay, now I'm just going to solve this equation for x to figure out how many hours have passed. So I'm going to add 11 to both sides, and I get negative 2x equals negative 8 divided by negative 2, and negative 8 divided by negative 2 is 4, so that means 4 hours have passed. Okay, the last one it says, if the perimeter of the isosceles triangle below is 18, what is the value of x? So perimeter is around the triangle. 
I have two x's and a six. So the way I can write the perimeter is two x plus six, and I know the perimeter is 18. So there's my equation, and now I will be able to use it to find the value of x. So first thing I need to do is get rid of the constant. I'm going to subtract six from both sides, and I get two x equals 12. We'll divide both sides by two, so x is 6.